Hindu Christian Dialogue for Fellowship, a series of online lectures and discussions jointly organized by the Ecumenical Christian Center, Sri Ramakrishna Mission, Office for Ecumenism and Dialogue, Catholic Bishops Conference of India, and Focular Movement. Let me introduce a moderator for this online webinar by name Dr. Deepali Banot. Dr. Bina Deepali Banot is a former associate professor in the Department of Sanskrit at JDM College, University of Delhi, where she taught for more than 40 years at both the undergraduate and postgraduate levels. She taught papers related to Vedas, Upanishads, Sanskrit literature, and Indian culture. She also has a keen interest in Indian art and culture and Sanskrit Shilpa Sastras. She has been associated with various programs, projects, seminars, workshops, organized by Women's Studies and Development Center, University of Delhi, and served as the coordinator of the Women's Development Center and the certified course in Women's Studies in her college. She has been actively engaged in interfaith activities for more than three decades and has participated in a number of national and international interfaith seminars and conferences and presented quality papers. At present, she is one of the Associate Secretaries General and a member of the Executive Committee of Religions for Peace in Asia. She is also the co-chair of the Women of Faith Asia Pacific Network, Religions for Peace Asia. She has been closely associated with the Focalara movement and its activities for the past several years. She has also conducted a number of interfaith women's journeys with several parts of India for organization Interfaith Coalition for Peace. As a life member of the Guild of Service and NGO engaged with women's empowerment, she has passionately worked for the project of the rehabilitation of abandoned widows in Vrindanam for over two decades. She also co-edited an amazing book entitled Gender Concerns in South Asia, Some Perspectives. Her special areas of interest are issues related to women and women's empowerment and activities related to interfaith harmony and peace. We're extremely fortunate to have you as moderator, Professor Deepali Banot. I cordially invite you to take this time to moderate this amazing and exciting online webinar. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Reverend Sukumar. A very good evening to all the esteemed participants of today's lecture. I'm deeply honored for this opportunity of moderating the 17th Hindu Christian Dialogue for Fellowship, which has been jointly organized by all these uh, groups that already Reverend Sukumar has mentioned. Thank you, Father Matthews, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to moderate this lecture of this session. Friends, the topic for today's lecture is from self-centered to God-centered, the cannonball movement, movement of Saint Ignatius of Loyola. I welcome Father Sunny Jacob SJ to share with us the amazing story of Saint Ignatius of Loyola. Father Sunny Jacob SJ is a Jesuit education specialist for educating Margis Galway, Ireland. He is appointed by Father General as the gen, former General as Assistant for Mission and Identity of the Secretariat for Education for the Universal Society of Jesus in Rome. He is a well-known educationist in India and abroad. He founded St. Mary's School, Chandanakyari in 2006, and served as a principal in many other schools run by the Jesuit. 
He conducted several seminars for the heads of schools, CICSE. He helps the church in faith formation, inter-religious and intercultural education. He published books and many articles on educational subjects in Mentor, I-J-E-R-E, Jeevan, and many other magazines and periodicals, including UGC approved periodicals. He's a regular writer to Indian Currents, Youth Action Magazines, etc. His interventions on National Education Policy 2020 of the Government of India on behalf of the Church in India is well recorded. His networking with educational organizations and creating awareness about the National Education Policy 2019 is praiseworthy. Along with the CBCI and other Christian denominational organizations, he helped Catholic or Christian perspectives to be placed successfully before the Ministry of Human Resources Development and the Education Commission. Recently, he authored a book on educating India on the national education policy of 2020. Father Sunny is much sought after for educational seminars and workshops all over South Asia for Jesuit schools and others. He received several awards for his contributions, including ISM, STEAM, PED Circles, AICSE, etc. He is a member of the International Rotary Club from 2011 onwards. So it is our good fortune that we have amongst us this well-known educationist, Father Sunny Jacob SHSJ, and he is going to share with us the amazing story of St. Ignatius of Loyola, a Spanish Basque Catholic priest and theologian of the 16th century. And the topic for today is rightly mentioned as the cannonball moment of St. Ignatius. Because this is an amazing story of a person who during his younger days, indulged in worldly pleasures like dancing, fencing, gambling, pursuit of young ladies, etc. He was keen to attain fame and join the army. And whilst in his teens, he took part in many battles. But unfortunately, in 1521, during one of the battles, his knee was shattered by a cannonball. And while he was recovering, he had the good opportunity of reading religious books related to the stories of Lord Christ and other saints. And that was a turning point in his life. And then he immersed himself in spirituality. And later, along with St. Peter Jacob, the first Jesuit priest, and St. Francis Xavier, they founded the religious order called the Society of Jesus in 1540. It is a great honor. Father Sunny Jacob, to have, you, to have you amongst us. So I request you to kindly take the floor and tell us this good story of this great saint. Thank you, I thank you very much. Mm. I request all the participants to kindly switch off their mics. And while, the Father, while Father Jacob is speaking, and I request you to please put all your comments and questions in the chat box and we will deal with them later. Father Sunny Jacob. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dipali, for your beautiful introduction. And uh, in just you have mentioned about St. Ignatius of Loyola. Uh, first of all, let me thank Father Matthew for organizing the 17th Hindu Christian Dialogue for Fellowship, jointly organized by ECC, Office for Ecumenism and Dialogue, CBCI, Sri Ramakrishna Mission, and the Focalare Mov Movement. I am really happy to be with you. Uh, in fact, it's an indeed a great event for me to talk to you all the way from 
the peaceful, beautiful city of Galway in Ireland. This is a second program after coming here, I am addressing India. So this year is the 500th year of St. Ignatius' conversion, as uh, Professor Dibali just mentioned. So we Jesuits and their associates all over the world commemorate this year as the Ignatian year. And I think Father Matthew has asked me to share because of this importance, this fifth, fifth 500, otherwise we can say the fifth, five centuries over. So we are talking about a great man, St. Ignatius of Loyola. You know, it's very good to recall when the canonization of St. Ignatius was being considered, a Roman beggar was consulted. It's unlikely that he was popular with the great and good of Roman society. But the beggar was someone Ignatius has made an impression on. He described Ignatius as the small Spaniard with a limb who smiled a lot. I think Saint Ignatius is often obscured by the image of a soldier saint. We all know that, as Madam mentioned just now, he was a, an ambitious, he was a soldier. While this image has a merit. It misses the warmth that was very much part of Ignatius's life and character. Now let us look at briefly about Saint Ignatius. In fact, Inigo was his childhood name. So I will call him now Inigo. Inigo was born in 1491 in Basque region of uh, Spain. Spain has different regions and Basque region he was born. In the year before Columbus made his voyage to America, new artistic techniques and the rediscovery of classical Rome and Greece were sparking the emergence of what is called the Renaissance. Ignatius' world was that of the court with the kings, princes, and chivalry. Religious debates of Western church was never a concern for young Inigo. And when we look at today also, we see comfortable people are not inclined to question their surroundings too much, which was very true to Inigo. Up to his 26th year, he was a man given to worldly vanities and having a vain and overpowering desire to gain renown. In his autobiography, this is what we see uh, in the beginning itself. Up to the age of 26, he was a man uh, who was given to the worldly vanities, according to his own words. Ignatius was an outward looking young man who seems to have given little attention to his relationship with God. Ignatius outwardly practiced, like many, many people of today, outwardly practiced the religious practices of his time. Given his preoccupation with his quest for fame, he did not give much attention to God. In fact, God was not a concern, primary concern for him in his younger age. On the 500th anniversary of his accident at Pamplona, which I will talk about later, perhaps now is an appropriate time to revisit Ignatius' life and reimagine him through the eyes of the Roman beggar. It's good to see the smiling side of Ignatius. In the Ignatian year, we are looking at the conversion experience of Ignatius, not about his birth, not about his death. We are looking at this year as the conversion experience of Ignatius. It is in fact a metamorphosis of an ego to Ignatius. I told you the childhood name of Ignatius was Inigo. 
and uh, he became Ignatius in, in, in that, that kind of way we can put an image that there is a metamorphosis, a change, a transformation that took place in Inigo. It's a journey, in fact, starting from Loyola to Manresa. Manresa is in Spain, a beautiful place where he got completely a different experience and world, which I will be mentioning soon. So in fact, it is a transformation of a self-centered inigo to a God-centered Ignatius. That's why I gave the title of this talk. It's a transformation of a self-centered person to a God-centered person. Inigo to Ignatius. Now, when we look at the inward pilgrimage of Ignatius, on May 20th, 2021, we, the Jesuits and their associates, millions of students and alumni, our parents and the church as a whole, the Ignatian family we can call, they began the year celebrating the 500th anniversary of Ignatius' cannonball moment and conversion. In fact, uh, somebody called me up and asked me yesterday, Father, what is that cannonball experience? I said, wait and listen to me today. <laughs> I will tell you. So, what is cannonball experience of Ignatius? The celebration will continue through March 12th, 2022 to fourth, 400 year anniversary of the canonization of Ignatius. And it will end on July 31st, 2022, a feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Now Ignatius, just look at uh, briefly about small, uh, his childhood experiences. Ignatius was known as Inigo in his early age. I told you that already. Inigo was born in the ancestor castle of Loyola. That is why Ignatius of Loyola, name came. It is in the Basque province of Guipuscoa. That is an exact place name in, uh, in Spain. He was the youngest of 13 children of the noble and wealthy family. He was seven years old uh, when he lost his beloved mother. It is good to see the family background when we, when we look at the person. In 1506, Ignatius became a page in the service of a relative because they are all royal family people, rich people. Uh, his name is Juan Velasquez. Uh, he was a treasurer of the kingdom of Castle. In 1517, Ignatius became a knight in the service of another relative, Antonio Mandrique de Lara. Otherwise, he was a duke of Najara, a small petty kingdom. And uh, he was also the viceroy of Navarre. These are all, don't worry about the places, but I'm just mentioning very important families he's coming from. And uh, this relative employed Ignatius in military undertakings and a diplomatic mission. Now there was a war between Spain and this particular place called, uh, and uh, and uh, French France. You no. Know? While in a war, Ignatius was defending the citadel of Pamplona because it is so dear to him and his family is. Uh, I told you already, chivalry is his habit. He was a young man. He wanted to show his power because he was in love with a girl. Uh, unless and until he shows his valor, he will not be able to win over her. So there was a war in that uh, citadel of Pamplona against the French in which he was hit to by a cannonball on May 20th, 1521. Sustaining a bad fracture on his right leg and damaged his left leg. This event changed Inigo forever. Until this cannonball moment, as I earlier I mentioned to you, Ignatius, as his own words, he says, I was, or he always used the third person. And he says, he was a man given to the vanities of the world, vanities of the world, worldly life, whose chief delight consisted in martial exercises with a great and vain uh, to, dis, to, 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 to win renown, name and fame. Autobiography, Ignatius autobiography, number one, the paragraph number one itself talks like this. 
In fact, Ignatius was only five feet, two inches in height, very, not very high, tall figure, short in stature. And in his youth, in abundance of hair of a reddish tint, you know, these are all very, very uh, handsome looking uh, signs. Eh? He was a lover of music, especially sacred hymns in his teenage. But the cannonball and injury on his leg at Pamplona made Ignatius a new man for the rest of his life. That's the story I'm explaining. And the implication of that one for all of us. This is his new life. A transformed life. A saintly life. After initial treatment at Pamplona, he was transported to Loyola in his own castle in 1521. There his condition became so serious that for a time it was thought he would die. When out of danger, he found he was limping because of the operation. Those days, no anesthesia, no operation proper like this. Today's world. So he chose to undergo painful surgery to correct the mistakes made when the bone was first set. Because in the first set, he, uh, he got well but he was limping. Then he said, no, no, I should not limp. You see, the background of that man, he was a, a, a chivalrous man. Very good, a courageous young boy. So he said, operate me again. So the result was a convalescence of many weeks, during which he read the life of Christ and the life of the saints. These were the only reading available. In fact, he asked for Don Quixote, the French uh, romantic novel in a uh, handwritten book. He wanted to get to that one. He could not get. So they, the relatives gave these two books. And then, uh, very interestingly, he had to read it because nothing else is available. Reading the lives of saints made him to think deeply about life and its meanings. So the cannonball experience made him to think differently. If Benedict or Dominic and Francis of Assisi can become saints, why can't I? He started thinking. This was a reflection of a determined, a valiant, youthful soldier that you must keep in mind. Then on, nothing could stop him from his pilgrimage to sainthood. In fact, Inigo slowly and steadily evolved to St. Ignatius of Loyola. The change that took place in Ignatius's, uh, Ignatius was so profound, but his former way of uh, life still attracted him. It happens to many people, no? Even after changes also, the earlier life will influence them so much. It attracts them so much. So it happened to Ignatius for so long. His quest for glory had encompassed everything in his life. He could hardly just walk away from these thoughts and start anew. A battle waged from within. Within him, in fact, uh, there was a huge conflict. Should I go back to the old, old attractions or should I look for what is happening to me new ways? And he found the consolation in both the thoughts. Um, more of old thoughts. His former ambitions still tried to entice his imagination. Anyone, now I'm looking at ourselves, no? Anyone making a change in their life knows that the hardest period is early on. When the comfort of where you have come from can seem very attractive compared to the path you have sought to embark on. And it was not different in the case of Ignatius also. He was tempted to go back several times. Now, at that time, God works myster mysteriously. You know? It was in this point he got a mystical experience. He says about it in his own autobiography, he says, I quote from him, he says, one night, as he lay sleepless, he clearly saw the likeness of Our Lady and the Holy Child Jesus. 
and because of this vision he enjoyed an excess of consolation for a remarkably long time he felt so great a loathsomeness for all his past life that it seemed to him that all the images that had been previously imprinted on his mind were slowly erased this is what autobiography says autobiography he writes about his own story in fact he dictates to one of his aides and this is what written a life a, when we look at the changes we must look at this way a life that was once so full of noise has now been replaced by something simple his satisfaction now came from something so pure looking at the stars and from this ignatius derived great consolation and a sense of peace so he started looking within an inward journey started by ignatius and seeing that what is happening to him and the minute things he was he was aware a great deal has now happened in the life of ignatius many things changed for ignatius mandrisa the place where he spent his long time part of his conversion was very challenging and transformative for his spiritual life i'm not going to explain that but uh, there he had a lot of uh, what you call uh, feelings of what to do and then he went through this uh, penances and difficulties and then a uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, what you call confessions and so on about his past life so that means something deeply happening to him and in mandrisa he started believing in the providence and an ability to listen very much you know for and that that has helped ignatius on his way to all through his life to holy land or to rome later providence meant everything to ignatius he put a total trust in god and believed that if something were to happen then god would ensure that it would happen and i think uh, is a very good point for all of us to reflect now it is good at this juncture to look at our own lives about this this transformation happening in our own life if we parallel if we look at ourselves can you recall a moment when you were so confident that you thought you could achieve everything or anything but for one reason or another things did not work out how did you respond subsequently that's one question we need to look at and looking at ignatius and looking at ourselves and such experiences are happening in our lives all of us are but an inward journey inward looking only will reveal to us the depth of it imagine that you 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 were a soldier with ignatius in the fortress what has he said which has inspired you to stay and fight alternatively what do you say to convince him that now is not the time to fight because the 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 opponents are so mighty but ignatius stood in the front so we need to ask ourselves just to contemplating that situation and ask and in such a situation we also recall in our own lives and see what is that moment telling us now in february i told you uh, 1522 ignatius actually bid farewell after this this happening in loyola he bid farewell to his family because of the changes that are happening in him he went to monserrat this place near barcelona and in between mandris and barcelona a place called monserrat a place of pilgrimage in northeastern spain people used to come in big number he spent 3 days in confessing the sign of his his whole life he explained to the monks there confess confess at every hour he used to go for confession and uh, symbolically he hung his sword and dagger 
near the statue of Madonna, Black Madonna we call, Mother Mary. And he abandoned everything and he put a sackcloth, spent the night of March 24 in prayer. Means what is going on deeply within, externally also he's shown in his life. The next day he went to Mandresa, a town 48 kilometers. I told you, walking all through these days, the forest, to pass the decisive months of his career from March 25th, 1522 to mid February 1523. He lived as a beggar, ate and drank sparingly, and he took a lot of penance, attended a mass and spend seven hours in a cave outside Mandresa. That's why the Mandresa is very famous there. In fact, a lot of, uh, in fact, a war was going on within him. God's ways are mysterious. He led Ignatius from the worldly life to goldly life. At Mandresa, Ignatius was enlightened. While sitting one day, on the banks of the Cardinal River, there is a small river, in fact, gone there. It's a small river. And he says, in his autobiography number 30, he says, the eyes of his understanding began to open. And without seeing any vision, he understood and knew many things, as well as spiritual things, as things of the earth, both. And he says, so many things he learned. In fact, he says, a schoolmaster teaches a child, like, no, he learned everything with that experience. At Mandresa, he wrote the fundamentals of his little book, The Spiritual Exercises. Of course, under the close of his studies at Paris, he made a, a, a lot of addition to this same book, continue to add up. The spiritual exercise is a manual of spiritual arms containing a vital and dynamic system of spirituality. What he underwent, honestly, sincerely, committedly, he put down as a book. That is called the spiritual exercises. During his lifetime, Ignatius used to give it to his spiritual retreats to others, especially to his followers. The rest of his life is a journey, is well documented, all of us know. He was known as a great pilgrim of Europe. He started enormous things, what you call uh, uh, spiritual exercises and educating people. No, that's why the Society of Jesus is known as the schoolmasters of Europe for their contribution to the spread of quality, integral education. Ignatius was a pilgrim, poor in search of God's will in his life. My dear friends, according to Father Arturo Sosa SJ, the current superior of superior general of the Society of Jesus, he called, I, I quote from him, he writes, for Ignatius, a life of poverty was an expression of intimacy with Jesus. More than words, his poverty was a sign of his interior transformation. As I told you, the providence, no? So his interior transformation of his growing indifference to prepare himself to follow God's will, of his sense that everything came down as a gift from God. You know, he called De Arriva, that is a Spanish language. Now, my dear friends, when we look at this, in the context of this Ignatian here, I put up a little reflection for us, a thoughtful reflection of Saint Ignatius and his spirituality, a life journey. Was Saint Ignatius a spiritual man? A saintly or holy man, a deeply God-fearing, prayerful man, as we all consider. Certainly not, at least for the first 26 years of Ignatius. That's why I said that Inigo, the transformation took place to Ignatius, Inigo to Ignatius. Now, one example I can give that he was not a spiritual, you know. One example from his life. On one occasion, a group of young men bumped him against a wall. He immediately removed his sword and charged at them so violently and fiercely, fiercely, that if someone had not stopped him, 
either he would have killed someone or they would have killed him so this was one incident he mentions in the autobiography he was so so um, angry and uh, uh, in fact he was violent at that time now let us look at the the contribution of ignatius from the spiritual exercise a few uh, major points i will place before you which is uh, which is essence of his spirituality number one is he says finding and encountering god in all things that is the transformation took place from a man who did not have that much of a primary place for god in his life he now he says finding god in all things it means that nothing is considered outside of the purview of the spiritual life ignatian spirituality considers everything as possible encounters with god that is why he has placed a, a world affirming spirituality in the principle and foundation of the spiritual exercises which is the centrality the essence of the spiritual exercises ignatius would like us to in, be indifferent to health and sickness a long life of a, or a short life honor or dishonor riches and poverty because all these can be occasions to encounter god god is present in every one and everything laboring for its growth you know his own personal experience he used to stare at the sky and see the twinkling stars in the sky and he used to feel so much touched by god and he used to say quoting from bible my father it is is at work so am i that is the experience he had god is present in everything and everything laboring for its growth ultimately everything shares in the source that is god like the rays of the sun and the sun now what we see is all emerging from god it's like the sun and its rays ultimately uh, uh, he, he believes that the waters of the fountain and the fountain lake you know some origin or the origin is called god and we must accept that that is so see god's presence everywhere that's the first thing he says the second thing is, for us important is contemplative in action contemplative in action remember the history of the church at that time people were contemplation one side and the action is second that kind of a things not separation was there ignatius made this one therefore the implication of this one is we are called to be contemplatives in action that means being active people with a contemplative stance towards the world instead of seeing the spiritual life as enclosed within the walls of the monastery ignatius asks us to see the world as our monastery this concept totally novel and radical for religious life of that time because people used to get away to a monastery to live a leader spiritual life ignatius says no we have to be in the world it's an invitation and a challenge for us today this is a sign qua non if we are to encounter god in all things that's the second point third point is freedom and detachment freedom and detachment i think that what prevents us from a life of freedom and joys uh, is that we are inordinately attached to people or places or things we have disordered affections having affections and being attached to a certain people and things are fine that is natural however inordinate disordered attachment is what brings us sorrow and pain since it is an affection it is appealing but it is disordered it is not life giving it causes death ignatius invites us to move towards ordered attachments if we did so we would become freer and happier 
Ignatius certainly wanted us to have life and have life to the full. The next point, the, the, the Ignatian spirituality, the centrality is discernment. During the crisis of the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, we are constantly called to make choices. Isn't it? All of us, those who are listening to me, all of you have to make choices. The crisis is at once global and its spread and impact and local in its visibility. It has affected nearly everything and everyone and has brought us face to face with a, a plethora of choices. The challenge is to choose correctly when faced with a conflicting set of choices. To this end, the rules for discernment from the spiritual exercise could prove helpful. They are valid and relevant even today after more than 470 years. They are deeply rooted in reality and have stood the test of time. The challenge is not only to know the rules, but also to have the wisdom and grace to know how, when to use, and when to use them. So discernment is very, very important. We all talk about discernment. Discernment is not simply coming and discussing and debating and deciding. Discernment is seeing what God wants us to do in this current context. I think this, is, this COVID-19 situation will ask us to be more discerning people. And one more point is that we have a word called magis. And many of you must have heard about the magis. My friends, the alumni and so on, they will talk about magis. You know, magis means everything for the greater glory of God. Ignatian, the, 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 uh, what we call is uh, the gist of Ignatian spirituality is AMDG, ad majora de gloria. That means for the greater glory of God. It is one of the hallmarks of our spirituality. Mediocrity had no place in the world view of Ignatius. The spirituality of the magis is a spirituality of infinite possibilities. It is not a spirituality that would result in a heart attack. Rather, it's a spirituality that would bring depth joy and breath of fresh air into our lives as Ignatius was happy. Father General, when talking about the magis says, it is a call not only to do more, but also to do it better. That is called magis. It's not the amount you do, but do better. That is called magis. And uh, so, now let us just, as, uh, before I conclude uh, this, let me tell you about, uh, we are celebrating this, this year as Ignatian year. And I said it will continue for one year. What is actually the significance of the year, Ignatian year? God continues to invite each one of us in deepening relationship. In other words, to ongoing conversion. We believe that by embracing this invitation, we embrace our God who calls us to act in new, bold ways that reconcile our world, bring about justice, peace, and compassion. Look at what is happening in Afghanistan. Look at what is happening in many parts of the country. We need justice, peace, and compassion. For this Ignatian year, we ask for the grace to see all things new in God. Now, cannonball moment of Ignatius is the reason for the society of Jesus and its numerous institutions, innumerable stakeholders, alumni, and our students across the world. For all of us, the pledge is to continue the grace of Ignatius' conversion in our world. In fact, the Jesuits or the Society of Jesus therefore identified four universal apostolic preferences to serve the world in our contemporary world. In the next 10 years, this is the, this is the focus we are doing. Number one, to show the way to God through spiritual exercises and discernment. You know, my dear friends, today's people, all of us, are in fact caught 
uh, between two major forces. One is extreme secularism. Now I am in Ireland or in Europe. I see how extreme secularism, that means God has no place. That's one way of looking at it. And therefore, chalega, everything goes. There is another one is extreme fundamentalism. Like uh, the best example you see right now in, uh, in Afghanistan or in many parts of the Central Asia or within the country, we, we all have enough experience without naming them. We know fundamentalism is, is very much uh, pushing us. So in between two new major forces, we, the Jesuits, are asked to do, all of us are asked to do, in fact, all of us are asked to show the way to God whichever religion people belong to. That's the one thing. Second, and the tool is spiritual exercises is a very good thing for us. So number one. Number two, proper discernment. So that's the first thing. The second area is to work with the poor, the outcasts of the world, those whose dignity has been violated in a mission of reconciliation and justice. I was talking about the Vashish Guptaji and so on is working for peace. The alumni is working for others. Many of us are, many of you are. Uh, Father Matthew himself is engaged in peace building. And I think we need to come out with that much more strongly. Like Father Stan Swami, which uh, the name everybody knows in India now, he stood for this. We walked with the outcast, the people. That's the second mission we need to do in the context. And third one is to accompany young people in the creation of hope-filled future. You see, there is no hope. Quite a lot of hopelessness is uh, entering into the lives of the people. And I think, especially the youth, we need to give them hope and give them that there is, there is a future. So that is the third area of the mission. And the fourth and finally is to care for the common home. That is the, that stress on ecology and the importance of the, the web of life and so on, as Pope Francis says in the Laudato Tosi. My dear friends, we Jesuits and all of our associates, or alumni, or friends, students, and their families must therefore, uh, must an inward pilgrimage with Ignatius. I, I put it this way, the last point, I take you through a small inward journey. No? We are in the Ignatian year. There are organized prayer services of international conference, province, community levels, everywhere you'll find. Social media is full of programs. Added to these meetings or videos on Ignatius or any of these topics, we need to take an in inward pilgrimage. We must miss, if we don't take a, a much needed inward journey to experience the cannonball moment of each one of us, our communities and institutions and families, professional life, etc., we will miss the point. And therefore, an inward journey is very, very important. Cannonball for me is a symbol, a place where purpose meets with the new path. It is understanding the why that derives everything we do as Jesuits and associates. Life takes on a new meaning. And our purpose becomes crystal clear to us. It's a moment for every person that inspires fulfillment in the areas of one's life. Ignatius's cannonball moment was a significant moment of transformation. We must recognize our cannonball moment also. So I ask all of you who are sitting here, we must ask, or you must ask yourself, what is your cannonball moment? What changed you in your life journey? What is a cannonball moment in your community life, in your family life, in your professional life? What transformative experience has happened to you in your professional life or institutional life, which corresponds with the cannonball moment of inigo? As I said, cannonball is a symbol. It was a surprise to Ignatius, but a sign of the Holy Spirit working in his life was clear through this, uh, the experience of cannonball. God's spirit is at work in us and among us too. 
it does not discriminate us in the name of religion caste ethnicity language and culture the same spirit that changed inigo to ignatius a worldly man to a spiritual saint is at work in us too recognize the work of the spirit in you in your family in your communities and in the institution you serve i think ignatian year we need to make a spiritual pilgrimage for all of us we need to reflect we need to discern i'll conclude now we need to discern delve deeply in the inward pilgrimage to see the canon wall experience i am sure there are moments of transformation new modes of life that happen to us in our life journey once we identify it be grateful for such i call it a cannonball moment of you in this ignition year there are abundant god surprises in our lives but we often overlook the work of the holy spirit in us in our communities or in whatever work we do in the institutions and professional life perhaps we can uh, pen down the cannonball experience to relish our internal transformation moments in our life journey now if if you look at uh, three points with that one i will complete especially you can reflect on this uh, this uh, moment of uh, pandemic and so on is very important for us to discern and see where we can uh, see god's work now for my dear brothers and sisters who are here three lessons from ignatius for us in the current context with that one i will conclude number one i learned from ignatius is change is okay change is okay cannonball not only shattered his leg but his plans in tatters too therefore change will happen to our life accept change is okay number two community is vital for us after his conversion ignatius realized that the insight god was giving him has to be shared and he sought out like minded people much of his early ministry was sharing the spiritual exercises so if you have a god experience it has to be shared and you must build a community and community is vital that's the second point and third is make time for contemplation in our lives while in convalescence ignatius began to contemplate things beyond his standard frame of reference he was open he was listening and this made him to do greater service always with a smile on his face that's about ignatius and finally a few question for us, us for to reflect for the discernment ask yourself how do i relate to god is it out of an obligation or desire to have a more personal encounter with god it's a deeper question on our spirituality our religiosity etc second am i preoccupied with the bettering myself materially when i pray what do i pray very often do i focus on what i want from god or do i ask god to be shown what i do to serve others thirdly what about the early life of ignatius is it matches up with where i am in my life how do i see the ignatius's life early life uh, in my life and do this is a resemblance in my life do i have a change on the on the way of my life how are we under encountering god in the context of the second and the third brutal wave of the covid-19 pandemic what is god's message to us in these trying and challenging circumstances we must reflect and discern in this context to make us better people and better spiritually aware of people and to have that kind of a a transformation which ignatius experienced and therefore my dear friends this year as we call the ignatian year 
and the theme which I am talking, as Ignatius changed from his life, from self-centered life to a God-centered person, we can also do if we deeply look into ourselves and see and listen God and the spirit that is all around us. And uh, as uh, we celebrate the 500 uh, year of Ignatius, Ignatius conversion, not his birth or anything. I wish all of you a very, very happy Ignatian year and uh, have a wonderful cannonball experience of you on your life journey. Thank you very much and over to you. Kindly unmute and speak. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Father Jacob, for that such an illuminating and inspiring talk. Because you not only talked to us or you told us the story of St. Ignatius, but also made it so relevant as how we can transform it into our own lives. And when you were talking, you told us that all of us need to pause and reflect. Reflect where we are in our journey of life. How do we relate to God? How do we relate to others around us? How do we relate to other human beings? And not to find our own cannonball moments. And I think we are all going to pause and reflect on that. And when you were talking about the transformation to find God in all things, it reminded me of our Upanishadic sayings, which tell us, this whole world is pervaded by that Lord, by that supreme power, and we need to look for it. It is in us and it is everywhere. And also the magic not to do the best, but to do whatever we do better and not to think about, you know, what is good, what is bad, etc. It also reminds me of the uh, second chapter, verse 37 of uh, 38 of Bhagavad Gita, which says, Sam Sukh Dukhe Same Kritva Labha Labha Jaya Jayo Tato Yudhaya Yudjaswa Nainam Papa Mavatsesi. That means, Lord, uh, when Arjuna was perplexed what to do in the battlefield, then Lord Krishna told him, Treat alike victory and defeat, gain and loss, pleasure and pain, get ready for the battle. Fighting thus, you will not incur sin. This is not the battle, but each and every deed that we do, we should not think whether it will be gainful for us or whether we will lose, whether we will be sad or free. So taking in your stride the gain and loss, the victory and defeat, put in your best. And that is what I think St. Ignatius also was telling us. And also to make a journey within, to look into our own self, and make a choice. And this reminds me of the Munduko Upanishad, which tells us that in each moment of our life, we have always two paths, even the Kato Upanishad, the Shreya and the prayer, the pleasurable and the one that is good for us. And we usually succumb to the pleasurable ones like Ignatius did in his early years. We run after our worldly pleasures, but it is only the journey towards God, the journey, inward journey to have our cannonball moment that we can reach Vishraya. Thank you so much for this inspiring message. I think we are all going to go back and reflect, pause and reflect on this. Thank you. So let Thank me you. see the chat box to see what questions and comments have arrived. Uh, Okay, I'm using my mobile. So mesmerizing storytelling father, that is Debasis Gupta. And then uh, from Bernard Goa, God's ways are always beautiful and higher than ours. We realize it only in retrospect after many years. So these are comments. And from Inigo Joshmin, Joshim, sorry for mispronunciation. Father Sunny, you have led us into an excellent spiritual inward journey. Profound and challenging talk. Thanks. Then from Edelvis 
quadros. As a student of Jesuit institutions, I feel enriched by today's lecture. In my year at St. Xavier's College of Education, the Jesuits introduced me to uh, introduce the Ignatian pedagogical model, which I used always in my years as a teacher and which made me a teacher with a difference. I'm ever grateful for this. So this is also such a beautiful comment from Edelvis. Then Devasis Gupta also says, excellent session by Father Sani Jacob, the concept of magis in terms of doing everything for the greater glory of God and continued efforts to do things better than one can is well understood. We must unite across the world to stand up against social inequalities as that only can bring about peace and a paradigm shift from being self-centered to God-centered for ourselves. Maybe that would be our soul's true positive internal transformation in this life. Happy Ignatian year. Then uh, I have two more comments. And Mary Atad says, happy Ignatian year, Father Jacob. Adelvis again says, Father, you are a great storyteller. From Lourdes Baptista, Baptista, thanks for renewing the Ignatian spirit through your sharing. From Rosa, thank you, Father Sunny, for the beautiful reflections shared on life of St. Ignatius. From Abhishek Gupta, so inspiring, really, my affection to you all. All that is comes from all the emptiness, respect being empty, respect that with uh, inverted commas, which is not Shiva. Materialism will surely burden you and slow you on your path. From Ravin Roy, thank you very much with illuminating uh, talk. We have a cannonball hits every day in our life but we lack introspection to transform it in a better human, to transform in a better human being. That's right. That's From Samuel Sunit, our Father Sunny, superb, insightful thought about St. Ignatius of Loyola. We will reflect. Uh, there is a question. Yeah, also. yeah. We will reflect in our lives too with grace of our uh, it is by, with our God. Can you tell some more about his charity? This is a sure. question. Sure, sure. This is a question, Father Jacob. Yeah. We will reflect in our lives too with grace of our God. Can you tell us some more about his charity? Yes, it's, yes. Uh, just I will respond to that one. That's a very important question. I'm sure that those uh, who asked Samuel, Samuel, uh, that question about Ignatius, Ignatius used to say one thing, which is a principle today we accept in our schools, uh, which reflects his charity. We call it, uh, we call it um, a cura personalis. For Ignatius, care of individual is more important. You know? He does not believe in one size fit for all. One size fit for all. Each one is very, very unique. So therefore, Caring the person means according to his needs, his talents, his abilities, and so on. That is the principle the Jesuit education follows today. And therefore, the charity comes depending upon the person's need, person's care. Charity here is actually the love, the word, no? Cura personalis means care of each individual. That is, we very much we adopt in our schools and we practice that one. In fact, that is that is what which distinguishes Jesuit education from other educations. And today we talk about multiple intelligence and so on through Howard Gardner. Actually, 500 years ago, Ignatius has told about the same thing. Cura personalis is nothing else but this. So what we need today is, for example, I understand you according to your ability, your talents, your giftedness, your needs rather than making everything the same for everybody. And I think that is uniqueness to Ignatius spirituality. Then there is another question, Father, from Mary and Mary. Yes. Uh, 
and she is saying father sunny jacob do you have yes. any methodology or oh, yes. tools to accompany yeah, the on. youth for the future and give them hope yes that's very much we are uh, we have uh, for example the international level since i am working the international level right now we know international level we have uh, a task force working on uh, for example the youth is called uh, global citizenship program based on all this spirituality which is we are uh, uh, reaching out to the people so making a, a vision that is a larger vision than what we are all having the parochial vision today no if you look at the world in a globalized world what we see today is more we we call it a globalized world but we are all becoming more and more regionalistic you see just look at that now we need to create an awareness in and through our educational endeavors to make people aware that we are universally universal citizens global citizens so that is one area we need second one i told you already uh, about the four what you call universal apostolic preferences one of them is concentrating on youth and which we are coming out with a lot of modules lot of programs and so on based on the ignatian principles it will be uh, uh, in various levels it will be implemented it will be coming for everybody and it will be available for you too we are concentrating that and serious study research etc one of the thing is that i told you the peace education which we are doing is also meant for youth now to bring the people really aware of what is going on and have proper socio political and cultural and religious analysis also we are giving i think the youth uh, are very much uh, blessed with these kinds of uh, uh, the scholarly preparations and making them to, uh, to to learn more we believe in accompanying the youth rather than teaching the youth father there is another question similar one from lourdes baptista she says please share any programs that are being conducted for youth in the ignatian year sure 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 uh, mr lourdes it will be there i will i will connect with you surely and then maria fatima says what i liked is to take the world as a monastery just like focolari to be in the world and not to and not of the world exactly exactly and, i very much agree yeah. yeah and samuel john dinkaran ask can you share his thought about counter reformation <laughs> that that was not the subject which i am dealing today no because that is why it is a very big thing actually the counter reformation because reformation you know the church when it was in the in the medieval period a lot of corruption etc etc and martin luther king and uh, many other scholars and the good people came out with changes etc at that time ignatius came out with what was actually the problem the problem of uh, lack of education for our people education doesn't mean that going to the school and having a degree much education and literacy is two different things and ignatius understood that the church was faced with the problems of the priests were not reflectively educated and that's how he entered into the education i told you jesuits were known as the school masters of europe because jesuits decided to teach people pro with proper critical analysis and thinking and that we continue uh, quite a lot even today so a counter reformation came because uh, 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 he said the, the correct within whatever is the anomalies we have and he did a lot and he 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 was one of the leading figure of his times in the 16th century yes so i think there are no any yes. further questions but everybody is delighted in this evening thank you so much father jacob and again sherilyn uh, is saying beautiful session a very inspiring and so much in tune with all that you have so uh no. i think uh, if there are any more questions ah, i would like to know few words on his mystical experience yes that so maybe i can uh, mention there are several mystical experience ignatius but one of them is in a place called uh, 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 in mandrisa i told you that place name mandrisa i was fortunate enough to go years ago there and uh, sit that if you go that place where ignatius was enlightened Uh, we call enlightened 
that place, if you go there today, you will see the Jesuits have kept enlightened peoples from world over, in, starting from Buddha to all the great uh, uh, spiritual leaders of cutting across the religion. Samson. We don't believe in that kind of a uh, strict, you know, whoever has experienced uh, enlightenment is mentioned there. Now, what happened, Ignatius? While sitting there, at that time, you remember 500 years ago, it was a simple place in a hilly area. And he was looking down there, the Cardona River was coming. Cardona River, water flowing. And he was in his, I told you already that uh, tremendous war was going on within him, no? That kind of a spiritual experience, uneasiness, un, uh, restlessness, etc. With that one, Ignatius is doing his penance and prayer every day. He used to sit seven hours, eight hours in the cave. And he sits there and watches the nature. And suddenly, while looking at, suddenly, in a spark of a moment, he felt that everything is revealed to him, which is, we cannot explain what it is. It's an experience. It's a spiritual experience, a mystical experience. And through that experience, he says, God has taught me like a schoolmaster teaches his child. That means within no time, everything, the concept is clear. And he says, not only spiritual matters, non-spiritual matters also clear to him at that time. That was one of his experiences, which is called Cardonier experience. Then another experience is called uh, when he was going to Rome, we didn't, went to uh, Jerusalem and could not uh, succeed there. And he went, finally, he was walking. And then there he gets a, a last Tota experience. Last Tota is a small chapel near Rome, where also I have seen uh, that place. If you go there, I mean, uh, Ignatius was going through there and then he got into there for a prayer. Suddenly, he gets another enlightenment there. And he says, God the Father, because he was confused what to do with his life. And suddenly God the Father appeared to him. He feels like that. And uh, Jesus was there and the Spirit. And he says, I want you to take this man with you. Father is telling son Jesus and also, also to Ignatius, join with Jesus. And that was another mystical experience of Ignatius. With that one, he was convinced what he is supposed to do. And you know, as a result of that one, the Jesuit society came in and the a tremendous contribution the society could do in all over the world uh, because of these kinds of mystical experiences. And mystical experience, we don't have an explanation to it. No? That's why himself, uh, Ignatius himself was not very many, but deeply writing about that. He says, I can't explain, but this is what I got. It. That's it. So tremendous experience. And I'm sure mystical experience sometimes, no, this, uh, this kind of a spark of an understanding comes to us also, especially in the light of spirituality, etc. Each individual can have. And that madam said, we have plenty of experience in Hindu uh, traditions. We have the Buddhist traditions. We are all over. I believe every religion has enlightened people. Yeah, thank you, Father Sunny, for this wonderful, uh, stimulating and uh, Father, inspiring Matthew, I think talk. there is another question. No, no, I am not concluding. I have two uh, two oh. questions. I will. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your so, question first, and Derek can wait. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I will. Uh, uh, yeah. With the uh, short. See, I had the opportunity to stay almost a month in Mandresa, and uh, I was staying with a friend of mine uh, who is a professor, and then um, uh, took me to this cave. And also uh, the Benedictine monastery of this Black Madonna. Montserrat. And uh, I was Montserrat, yes. And then um, I was told that there was a light uh, coming from uh, Mother Mary and uh, touched him. And then, uh, yeah, so, so I think there was also an experience with the Blessed uh, Mother. One. And the, another question is that uh, I also gone through this. Uh, the Ignatian uh, spiritual exercises, where he is also using lots of uh, imagination. That is the smell, the fire uh, of uh, all that. So th these two questions, I think it will be uh, interesting to all good, of good. us. Yes, uh, Ignatian spirituality is actually use of our senses, you know, very much in, uh, in that was what you are saying, uh, contemplation. And actually, we are not uh, simply meditation. Contemplation means we are placed ourselves with the scenes which we are imagining. You know? So a lot of uh, that kind of a, 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 what I call a spiritual basis has been given by Ignatius. And in our uh, uh, Ignatian retreat actually is based on contemplative retreats. We, we are 
fully using our all the senses to experience God's ways. I think that's one thing you said. Second one is correct. You say that Mon Montserrat Ignatius had that beautiful experience. And um, several times, that's why Ignatius was so much uh, touched by Mother Mary and he considers later as the mother of the society also. So much devotion to Mother Mary. That is his experience. And he gives a beautiful prayer for Matthew. That prayer always he says is, uh, Mother Mary, Mother of God, Mary, Mother of God, place me with Jesus. That means the intercessory uh, role of Mother Mary is acknowledged and saying that she is the Mother of God. And please take me to keep with Jesus and his values and his teachings, etc., mm -hmm. to walk in his path. So he was so much devoted to Mother Mary. So such many experiences of such are there with him in his journey. Thank you, Matthew, for saying that. Thank you, Father Jacob. There is another question from Derek uh, Barnabas. He says, yes. Father, the present pandemic has turned our lives to a drastic tragedy. How would Ignatian spirituality look at this as a cannonball in our lives? Yes, that's why I said this uh, inward journey will help us not only individually, but institutionally, professionally, etc. And society level, community level, family level, and so on. Now, looking at this current situation, Ignatian discernment and the tools of spiritual exercises of Ignatius will help us to understand what's happening. For example, I look at this way, that this pandemic has done a lot of harm, yes. But at the same time, it plays like an x-ray for us. It shows us, x-ray means what we cannot see through our eyes have been visibly manifested now. One thing is, what we consider as great, like our powerful weapons, our uh, uh, modern technological advancement and so on is not going to save us, it is clear. Now, that second, it shows us also our misplaced priorities has come out. Thirdly, we, it is also telling us that your division, your, uh, your uh, hatred against one community or one religion and people like that, no nation, etc., which is all absolutely, that is not the important thing. The important thing is unity, harmony, love, and uh, the web of life, which is God's uh, gift for us to, to, to strengthen that. I, didn't, I think this pandemic is telling us much more. And Ignatian tools will help us to really identify it. And in the larger uh, uh, way, no. For example, if we look at only about this five years or ten years, we may not be getting the full picture of it. You know, it is like a one. I use a, a, a lighter moment, a story, a parable is like this. You know, uh, once uh, the catechism class, uh, the teachers told the students, if you ask the God, God will give you whatever you ask. You know? So, so one day, the boy with that conviction, he happened to see God, and he asked God. God, what is one minute for you? What is one minute for you? The God said, one minute for me is one million years. Then the boy asked, please tell me, what is one rupee for you? And God said, one million rupees. Boy was so clever, he asked God, then why don't you give me one rupee? God said, wait a minute. <laughs> So this is what we, we all tend to see smaller ways, smaller ways, smaller. I'm not the belittling of any of those things, but we need to see in the larger picture. Maybe in the human history has uh, misplaced priorities. It is telling us that we have gone wrong somewhere. Change, correct the course. That's what Ignatian spirituality tells us. Right. Technology has made us life so fast and easy. Uh, the young people today, everything on the click of a button. <laughs> instant, instant. <laughs> yes. Instant, yes. Everything is instant. Thank you, Father, for that wonderful lecture. This evening has been really delightful. And we wish that you could come again and give us another lecture. I don't know if Father may be able to arrange <laughs> that. But I think everyone enjoyed today's lecture. So thank you again. Over to you, Reverend Sukumar. Yeah, thank just you. before Sukumar. Um, I, I think uh, the, the question about, you know, these uh, challenges by the corona and uh, this only enabled the uh, Father Sunny to, uh, to deliver the lecture. He's in Ireland and uh, in normal way we may not be able to, but corona made us that, you know, this all this. So there are challenges. <laughs> 
this challenge <laughs> yes it's a opportunities and it was such a wonderful uh, lecture and uh, we are grateful and then um, inspired by saint ignatius and uh, we will see what we can we ourselves can do so we there is also a certificate uh, course uh, along with this lecture and a question is need to be given so uh, this is the the question um, illustrate how the inigo through the inner transformation made a paradigm shift towards saint ignatius and transform the world how you will be able to find your own moments of transformation and influence the world so this is the question this will also be given to uh, in the whatsapp groups so uh, sukumar and uh, minlun sukumar are you not there yes so um, i think uh, the, today it was such a, a, a blessed moment for us and um, see this uh, almost one and a half hours we have uh, really uh, forget about the time and then it was such a stunning inspiring motivating uh, lecture and uh, i thank uh, father sunny and uh, also this uh, splendid moderation by our uh, moderator uh, dr deepali bhanot and uh, she also gave from the uh, inspiration from bhagavad gita so we have uh, actually uh, inspired by this spiritual uh, great uh, visionary so i thank uh, both of them and uh, milun how you are you here and uh, yes, kumar ah, okay yes, so what is uh, for the next sunday Okay, next Thursday lecture will be on Saint Edith Stained by Reverend Dr. John, John Sakaira OCD. So uh, the uh, lecture is on Edith Stein and she was a professor of phenomenology, philosophy, uh, who was an assistant to Husserl and a collaborator uh, with um, uh, Martin Heidegger. So she became Catholic and a saint and uh, that was about uh, the, the next uh, thursday lecture